Hey, my name's Tom and welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. Recently, we went through our third anniversary of living with this heat pump. And in a similar way to gas boilers, the recommendation is that a heat pump is serviced annually. We had the first two services included as part of our uh, installation package, but for the third year, we had to organize it ourselves. So I booked one in. Um, as a bit of a check on how the heat pump is faring after three winters and hopefully to ensure that the system was performing as it should be. Because the first two years uh, of, of living with a heat pump we had a service as part of that installation package, this was the first time that I'd actually paid for a service of the heat pump. So in this video I'm going to spend a little bit of time telling you what happened, um, what it cost and what it might mean for us going forward in terms of services in the future. So first of all, who did the service and how did we find them? How did I book it in? Well, it wasn't that complicated. Um, I went through the Valent website to get a Valent engineer or, or an approved uh, equivalent to perform the service on the system. Ringing them up, um, they gave me a few options of, what, of, of dates to pick from. Uh, I paid for the service over the phone and that was it. It was booked in for a couple of weeks time. Um, they did give us a range of times that they may come to the house so for us uh, we booked in between 8 and 1 p.m on a certain day in october so what did it cost this is something that you occasionally get a few comments about in uh, on my videos about our heat pump well the cost for the service of this heat pump and the hot water tank was 225 pounds which is obviously a bit steep maybe three times what i might have paid for a boiler service in the past and depending on how you compare costs with running a boiler, and if you've watched my video about three years living with a heat pump, uh, you might have seen that working out savings is pretty nuanced, but 225 pounds would more or less eat up the savings that we might have made on our energy costs. So that's not ideal. And it is a lot of money. So I wonder what value for money would look like on this kind of service. What might they do that would mean 225 pounds was worth it? I know a service gives peace of mind, ensures safe and efficient systems, hopes to extend the life of the system. And I guess these are reasons why we service any bit of kit. But is that enough? Is that really value for money? So fast forward a couple of weeks after booking, uh, we had a few reminder messages from Valent about the day. And at 11 a.m. I had a call from the engineer to say that they'd be um, 30 minutes away. I don't know about you, but I would kind of prefer hearing from them at the start of the day to say, hello, you're my second appointment today. I'm likely to be with you between 11 or 12. That would help uh, me plan the day rather than waiting for a few hours unsure when or whether they would come. But that's just nitpicking really, isn't it? I shouldn't really complain. They did arrive around 30 minutes later in quite a big van, um, a van that wouldn't fit in our parking space. Uh, he did have quite a bit of kit with him. Um, that he'd brought along for the service so and he had to park down the hill about 100 meters and lug dub all that kit up i apologize he couldn't park closer i asked him if he didn't mind me watching what he was doing and taking a few photos and videos so here is some of the photos videos from the service but before i get into the detail i can say for sure that this service was much more thorough than what happened in the first two years of, of those those two services that we had in the first two years where someone came for 15 minutes maximum they ticked a load of boxes on an a4 sheet on a clipboard and got me to sign at the bottom straight away you could tell that a proper valent service was going to be a bit more detailed i should say at this point i am a mechanical engineer on paper as in i did a degree and i worked as a design engineer for almost 10 years uh, before my current role i'm a chartered engineer um, but I'm no plumber, I'm no heat pump engineer. So when I'm trying to work out what we, what, what the, what the service engineer was doing, I may get some of the details wrong about what we were looking at. But here we go. So the service, um, the engineer removed the outside shell of the heat pump, and it was really fun to see the inside. So the fan, the heat exchanger, the compressor, um, some electrical boards, all that kind of stuff. He then tested the two two electrical boards on either side of the heat pump. He then covered those electrics up and then I think he tested the refrigerant levels within the sealed compressor circuit. He then spent some time cleaning out all the internals of the heat pump. So wiping down surfaces, brushing out any dust 
uh, and then a spray clean internally. And there was quite a bit of dirt inside. I guess nothing out of this world after three years, but it was getting the system back to what it what looked like new in terms of cleanliness. And that's clearly not a bad thing. And that was more or less everything that happened to the external heat pump unit. Some electrical and refrigerant checks and a really thorough clean. The cover went back on without much hassle. Then heading back into the house, he checks the strainer on the pipework leading to, leading to the house uh, to ensure that this didn't have any debris from running the system. Um, we had a little conversation at this point about whether the strainer should or could be covered as in insulated. And he said it wouldn't hurt to do that. Um, that is a place where I guess we can lose some heat as water moves out, uh, moves into and out of the house. It's something that I've thought a, a little bit about over the last few years, but I've not done anything about it. So if you have a link to a good insulated cover that I could buy, drop it in the comments below and maybe I'll have a look. He then went inside and he checked the pressurization vessels on the hot water and central heating circuits and he seemed happy with what he saw. He checked the glycol levels in the system and refilled it slightly. He then checked the settings on the Sento Comfort Controller to see how the system was set up. He didn't make any changes and he seemed happy with my tinkering over the last few years in trying to get some more efficiency out of the system. I then pointed out some uh, some things that I was worried about. So first of all, some staining near the hot water tank and we talked about what that could have been from. Uh, I then asked about uh, the levels of liquid that had formed in a box below one of the uh, expansion vessels. He was suggesting that this is probably something that another engineer may need to look at at a, f at a later date, but nothing to worry about to begin with. And then finally, we had a bit of a conversation about our buffer tank and whether it was really needed on the system. You might have seen lots or well, some conversation about this online from different people about buffer tanks. and. Yeah, it does seem like it's not the greatest of designs to have one in. It does kind of mean that you've got some cool and warm water mixing in this in, in a buffer tank before it gets the radiator circuit. Maybe I'm misunderstanding a little bit about what it does, but it seems like that's not perfect for delivering heat where it's needed. But that was just about it. Uh, the engineer was with us for about 90 minutes. Uh, he seems to be fairly thorough with what he did. And I guess with any service, identified some things that may need to be looked at in the future. The performance of the heat pump doesn't seem to have changed uh, since the service. We're still warm uh, with sufficient hot water. My wallet is 225 pounds lighter, which is less ideal. But I feel happy that the system has had a good once over and seems to be working well. Okay, so that is what a service and maintenance of a heat pump looks like after three years. Again, 225 pounds is a fair chunk of money. He did seem to do a thorough job. But it does make you question um, whether it was really needed. And if it was needed and he'd spotted something that needed further work, not that I think that would be likely after three years, um, but that could have been more cost and it's uncertain about what that might mean in the future. And I may not be being sensible here, but for me, I feel like a gas boiler service is more of a health and safety thing. Um, incomplete combustion in a gas boiler means carbon monoxide risk or a leaky gas supply, and that risks explosion or fire. A heat pump service doesn't feel as safety critical. And yes, there is a small amount of uh, flammable liquid in the refrigerant circuit, but this feels very contained and outside. So having the system serviced to ensure everything was working as it should be, feels maybe less essential than a boiler service. And it's maybe more about performance than safety. Maybe that's me getting things a bit mixed up. So what do you think? What have I missed? Um, should I have asked anything else of the engineer? And do you think that that's value for money? Or what would be value for money for a heat pump service? How would you approach servicing a heat pump if you had one in the future? I hope that was helpful and interesting. Do let me know what you think.